Welcome to Meldon Law and Friends. I'm Jeffrey Meldon, founder and attorney at Meldon Law. Uh, this show, we try to bring uh, interesting guests from in and around the North Central Florida community for you to meet, greet, and uh, if you have a chance and they're in a business, uh, uh, share the wealth with them and uh, check them out. Uh, we have a great guest today for those that uh, own commercial buildings and uh, uh, solutions to your roofing problems. Roofing is a big deal right now uh, in Florida because your insurance company is going to tell you you need a new roof. And uh, our guest today can uh, discuss insurance, what the requirements are, uh, some of the things that uh, her company has uh, uh experienced as far as what needs to be done to take care of number one uh, your own roof but number two and most importantly to make sure your insurance carrier uh, continues to uh, care cover you so uh, this is going to be important information and uh, believe me when uh, the insurance company tells you if they uh, that you need to put a new roof on when uh, it comes time for renewal it's a common experience very expensive, and they don't pay for it in most cases. Uh, so uh, you do need to know what's the cost and are there any alternatives. So uh, we're going to get into that later. But before we go uh, on any further, I want to talk about an incredible uh, weekend. We had the uh, Scholar Athlete of the Year Banquet. Uh, it was co-partnered between Meldon Law and TV20 for all of North Central Florida. It's our senior scholar athletes. Every week during the school year, we give out a award on Wednesday. It's uh, covered by WCJB out at the high school. And the coaches and the uh, student athletes are uh, interviewed, uh, shown on screen, and given a lot of notoriety. So it's really a big deal because uh, there's more athletes in high school athletics than uh, anywhere else, certainly more than college or the pros. So uh, Melvin Law, for 25 years, has been partners with TV20, and every year we have the banquet at the end of the um, year and invite all of the scholar athletes, their coaches, families, uh, to join us. Since this was our 25th year in partnership, with TV20, we decided to really blow it up. We rented out the uh, University of Florida Stadium in the championship room and had uh, 250 uh, guests there. We also invited past winners. We've had over 700 past winners that have received scholarships. So uh, it was a big deal. And uh, we had a all-star lineup of speakers. Um, the head ball coach, Steve Spurrier, uh, showed up and gave some very sage ad advice as far as how to prepare uh, for the future and the fact that the scholar athletes in attendance are very bright, capable people. And he really, uh, I think, got the crowd going. Uh, famous sports writer Buddy Martin was there, and Buddy was uh, really... Um, enthusiastic about scholar athlete. He's a grew up in Ocala, uh, probably the most famous sports writer uh, from Ocala and maybe all of North Central Florida. He wrote uh, books with uh, Terry Bradshaw, Steve Spurrier, and Urban Meyer. Uh, plus, he received over 150 journalism awards over his 60-year career. Uh, in addition to that, uh, one of the Gator greats, Patrick Young, who played basketball at the University of Florida, led them to a Final Four in 2014 as ESPN SEC uh, journalist and is uh, on TV. He, uh, he came and uh, talked about overcoming adversity uh, in 2022, 10 days before his wedding. He was in a bad car crash and uh, wound up paraplegic and uh, has had to deal with uh, overcoming. He wound up getting married. He's still on the ESPN SEC network, and uh, he's done a remarkable job uh, in the face of adversity as far as putting it all together. So uh, Patrick was uh, great. Not only did he um, 
speak to the group, but he individually signed over a hundred books for um, our guests. Uh, there, the scholar athletes, past and present, and the coaches, and uh, he was he really took him a long time, uh, and we wanted though to uh, show the um, uh, all the scholar athletes, their coaches, their families, uh, some life lessons as far as uh, how to overcome adversity. We are all going to have uh, adversity in our lives and uh, how you deal with it is the measure of the person. So just think about that, how uh, uh, devastating uh, uh, an injury he suffered and yet uh, he's uh, approaching each day with uh, vigor and uh, positive attitude. A lot of it had to do with the fact that uh, Patrick Young was a SEC basketball scholar athlete of the year three years in a row. So you're dealing with a very smart guy who applied himself scholastically. And uh, I think that that's um, important because uh, when you prepare yourself for success, when adversity happens, then uh, you're in a better position to respond. Uh, so anyhow, the Scholar Athlete Banquet uh, was awesome. Uh, one of our Gator recruits, Miles Graham, won the award for the uh, Scholar Athlete of the Year. His dad, Ernest Graham, uh, was a Gator great and a professional uh, uh, running back. So uh, Ernest Graham was there and mom was there. Uh, it was really wonderful. And uh, I think everybody appreciated uh, the fact that we were recognizing uh, the best and brightest in our community. So thank you, TV20. Thank you, uh, all, your scholar, all the scholar athletes. It was really um, a wonderful evening. And uh, we just committed to another 25 years with TV20. I don't know if I'll be around uh, at the end of the next 25 years, but uh, God willing, I'll be there and... Uh, you know, be able to come up there and say something uh, inspirational to the crowd. Uh, other things that are going on, I'm here at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill. For those of you that don't know, we have a great podcast room. You can see all of Coach Spurrier's uh, helmets behind me, and uh, they're helmets that uh, for teams either coached or played on, had some uh, active role, in, and uh, it's just a terrific room. Well, I can see right outside our window here, there's these beautiful framed uh, jerseys. And uh, the jerseys were actually uh, used during the um, University of Arkansas game last November 4th, 2023. Uh, they're the first official black gator uniforms, and um, they're worn to salute those who serve. And that was what the game was all about. Um, it's, uh, they were designed to represent the United States Navy, the Marines, the Army, the Air Force, and first responders. So that's five jerseys, and they're all autographed by Bill Napier, uh, and they're being auctioned off right here uh, at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill uh, in support of the Fisher House. Uh, the Fisher House allows veterans and their families to stay there uh, uh, during their uh, time of need or due to medical issues. Uh, so uh, every one of these um, uh, jerseys is signed by Napier, and uh, if you want to bid on them, which all this money is going to charity, so let's get out there and do something. Uh, you can go to Auctions by Atkins uh, to join, and then there's a backslash uh, to join in on supporting the cause and place a bid. But just remember, Auctions by Atkins, and I would just put Gators, Gator uniforms in there, and it'll come up. And Atkins is spelled A-D-K-I-N-S, Atkins, Auctions by Atkins. So let's support this uh, very worthy cause. Um, another big event coming up quickly, June 7th and 8th, Rock the Country uh, between Gaines. It's in Ocala, but it's on the Gainesville side of Ocala. 
Uh, so it's easy for you if you're in Gainesville, if you're in Ocala to get there. Rock the Country featuring Kid Rock, Jason Aldean, and Leonard Skinner. And Meldon Law is giving away uh, two tickets for the whole weekend and a parking pass uh, for some lucky fans. So um, all you have to do is go to our Facebook page, uh, Meldon Law. I think uh, Instagram works as well. So uh, follow Meldon Law on Facebook or Instagram. Just go there. And we give away tickets for all the sporting events, the music events that are going on. And, you know, the Tom Petty Festival, we always give away a bunch of uh, tickets for. But this one, this is a, a hell of a lineup. Kid Rock, Jason Aldean, and Leonard Skinner. And uh, it's on June 7th and 8th in Ocala. Rock the country. So go online, look it up. I think, you know, the, the package, I think, is an $800 package for the tickets in the parking pass. So uh, check it out, and we're glad to be able to help. Uh, other, We're giving away lots of other tickets, uh, so uh, make sure that you... Uh, pay attention uh, to uh, what's going on. Just by, just follow us on uh, Instagram and uh, Facebook and all these ticket offers. Oh, Gator Bay softball. Um, if you want um, Gator softball tickets, um, we may have some coming up for the Super Regionals this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, it's going to be a huge event. I think it starts May 24th, Friday, 12 o'clock. I'm going to be there. And uh, if you want tickets, um, just go on to uh, our Facebook page or our Instagram page for Melden Law and see if you can uh, grab some tickets. Um, other things going on, we have um, a lot of really uh, up-to-date information on buying Florida auto insurance. Now, this is something nobody likes because it costs money and it's getting more and more expensive because the cost to repair cars went way up. The cost for everything. So um, whether it's your medical care, it's your um, the uh, cost to repair your car, whatever is involved in a crash, uh, the costs have gone up and insurance goes up. A lot of people say, Je uh, ask me, Jeffrey, if uh, I'm in a crash and it's not my fault, are they going to raise my interest rates? And uh, I mean, my insurance rates. And the answer is uh, no. Um, however, if you have three crashes within uh, three years, three citations or crashes within three years, they may uh, ding you for that. Okay, they think you're accident prone. Uh, even if they're not your fault, if you have three crashes and they're not your fault in three years, I think the industry says uh, you may, they may not be your fault, but you're awfully unlucky. So uh, that's why they raise rates on that. However, um, most insurance companies uh, know that it's um, illegal to raise rates if just because you were hit by somebody else. Uh, and reported it. Um, I was in an accident. I didn't need my own insurance, but I reported it just to let them know uh, what had happened. So uh, anyhow, I want to make sure that you uh, are aware of that and that um, you get the book. It's called Buying Florida Auto Insurance. You can uh, just go on our website and download it for free. It's up top. Um, or you can call the office, 352-373-8000. Some of the key points in the book, I'll summarize it, is buy uh, um, uninsured motorist coverage. I'll say that again. Buy uninsured motorist coverage. Um, I'll say it a third time. Buy uninsured motorist coverage. The state of Florida is the only state where you don't have to have bodily injury liability coverage, which means that half the time the person that hits you doesn't have any liability coverage and uh, whatever your out-of-pockets are, you're going to eat unless you have uninsured motorist coverage. Uh, you also need collision. Uh, you also need gap insurance and things like that. Uh, however, those typically are, 
on most policies. Our book lays it out. Actually, in one page, you can uh, see the summary of all the recommendations uh, that we have. So uh, again, do yourself a favor and you'll learn how to get top-notch coverage at the lowest rate possible. That's my promise. Get, get my book, Buying Florida Auto Insurance. You will uh, be very surprised at what you learn and what the coverages are and, and what it pays for. We're getting ready to take a uh, short break here and we're going to be back with our guest on Melden Law and Friends. What are you doing? Well, I'm joining the band, of course. Since Melden Law is the official law firm partner of the Florida Gators, I want to help. Dad, we're litigators. Let's stick to helping people in the courtroom. Well, can we still hang out and jam a little bit? At Melden Law, we won't back down. I was going down a one-way street and a girl that was driving her car T-boned me on my scooter. I ended up going for an MRI and discovering that I had two herniated discs. Coming to carry allowed me to not have to worry about what doctor I was going to see or what physical therapist I had to go to. They say, these are the people we trust. You're going to have a great experience there. And I honestly did each time. Call Melden Law. Your consultation is absolutely free. Albert, Alberta, I understand you were witnesses to a crash. Can you tell us about the accident? When you're in a crash, it's important to get witness statements immediately after the accident. Whether you're in a car, truck, motorcycle, scooter, or even a golf cart accident, at Melden Law, we won't back down. And I was in an accident. Someone ran a red light and hit me, and I was hurt. You don't know where to turn. Luckily, I called Jeffrey. These big insurance companies, they don't want you to win. They truly don't. But Jeffrey and his firm and the people that work here, they just really fight for you. You call the law offices of Jeffrey Belden because you're going to need help and they will help you. Call Melden Law right now. Hey, Sammy, look who's there. Say hi. Hey. Again. Melden Law, Jeffrey speaking. Jeffrey! Somebody, Somebody hit us! Hit yeah, us yeah, yeah. Here, we Here we go again. After the car accident, your personal life takes a toll when you have major injuries. Being a mother of three kids, having to work, it became overwhelming. Didn't know what well, it's going to be my outcome at Melden Law, actually. They went above and beyond. At Melden Law, we're not just your legal team, we're your support system. You do not have to go through this alone. At Melden Law, we won't back down. Welcome back to Melden Law and Friends. I'm here with my uh, friend, Cindy Quick, uh, sales manager and director of marketing at CBC Construction Group. Welcome to the show, Cindy. Hey, Jeff. Thanks so much for having me. We appreciate it. Well, good. Um, so you deal with roofing, right? Yes, sir. I know it may not look like it, but I get up on the roofs, do well, the inspections, and uh, help folks out. Oh, you do? Yes, sir. Oh, it said you're just a sales manager, director of marketing and all that, but as the sales director, sometimes you have to get... Into yes, sir. It. We're a small and growing company and very hands on. There is not a single thing that I would ask as a sales manager that I would not do, right? My teammates and I were going to be doing the same things. Well, that's good to hear. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you get into uh, the being a sales manager for a roofing company? Yeah, so uh, my story is a little non traditional. I was actually a Co server at Cody's at Lake Sumter Landing out in the villages. Uh, summer of 21, I had a table of regulars that were roofers, and the first day that they met me, they were not planning on having a drink and lunch. 
but if you know anything about Cody's, they've got those two for one specials. And uh, between three men, $150 drink tab later, they're like, you need to come work for us. And I was like, nah, I'm good. I'm happy where I'm at. Um, and then in May of 22, my former partner had a major motorcycle accident uh, out on Marion Oaks in Ocala shattered his entire left femur, both hips, a knee, a shoulder, and I had a couple of different realizations. One, roofing or uh, the service industry is not set up to take care of people when life happens, okay? And two, I didn't have as much financial security as I thought that I did with cash chips. Uh, so I called up the guys and I was like, hey guys, do you uh, still want me to be a roofer? And they're like, can you climb a ladder? And I was like, sure. So started training with them in summer of 22. Uh, by August of 22, I started taking contracts myself and got my own truck. And then September of 22, Hurricane Ian hit and I was the only one in the company who was willing to go down and work that storm. And I sold 2.6 million in my first year. Wow, well that um, made, made a this big day. difference for the company. Huh? Yes, yes it did. So would you, you just sent your crews down to wherever uh, where, what part of the state were you working in? So America? that is um, Sarasota, Charlotte, and Lee County, so southwest Florida. Uh, my first time being out that area. Venice is beautiful, even post-storm. It was just a great area. Um, we had an in-house crew that was a different company than where I'm with now, but we had an in-house crew that we brought down with us. We rented out a home from one of our clients, did their roof, and then we're working the neighborhoods and the areas surrounding. I was there about four or five days a week and then back up here on the weekends. So tell us what's going on right now with uh, CBC. So CBC Construction Group is a new and growing company, but we are looking to differentiate ourselves in the community by bringing education, ethics, and empathy back to an industry that very much needs more of it. Okay? Yes. So... Yeah, because uh, I'm sure a lot of our viewers and listeners are always wary of people that are, you know, say that they're uh, contractor, roofing contractors. They knock on your door yes, sir. and they give you a price about half of what uh, a real price is, right? Correct. And there's a couple of things education wise on that that we try and help dispel. So door knocking in and of itself, while it can be viewed negatively by the public, I don't view it as a negative thing if it is done appropriately. Okay. The times when I'm door knocking is when I'm actively doing a build and I'm doing a courtesy notice to the neighbors to let them know what's going on and offering if they would like me to come and check out their roof while I'm in the area, I can. But I'm never going to cold call, go into a neighborhood and say, hi, put me on your roof, put me on your roof, put me on your roof. Right. And, and you know, the, it's a good idea because sometimes all the homes in an area were built at the same time and if one needs a roof the other the others they may not need it that day but they're going to need it very much agreed jeff i have a, a neighborhood right now that i'm working in the villages that had a manufacturer defect on a several batches of shingles so this neighborhood uh, that has about 62 homes all built with the same brand same manufacturer same issue and they've got roofs that are 12 years old that are failing they should not be failing at 12 years old well, about okay? what, what's a reasonable lifespan for a roof Depending on your tree coverage and the area that you're at, in Florida, I've seen most roofs 17 to 22 years. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the way our climate is changing with insurance laws and um, some of the companies coming in, most homeowners are being forced to replace their roofs at as early as 15 years. But, but the useful life, if you take care of your roof and there's not a bunch of stuff that hits it and yes, it's, it's properly installed, it's not uncommon to get 20, 25 years Absolutely. from a roof. Correct. For people who are doing appropriate routine maintenance, okay, which is going to include annual inspections, okay, resealing of all of your uh, penetrations through the roof. So your lead boots, your pipe jacks, um, your exhaust vents, just making sure that those are sealed appropriately oh. and keeping organic matter off of your roof will vastly extend the lifespan of your yeah, product. Yeah, because uh, you get, you know, accumulation of leaves or whatever. They 
as they deteriorate, right, yeah. then they affect the roof, right? Correct. Not just the deterioration, but they hold moisture. So on a roof, you have an area called your valley where two slopes come together. The valley is what directs the water off of your roof. If you've got a pile of leaves in that valley, it is going to retain that moisture, okay? So that moisture is then going to penetrate under your shingles to your decking, cause rotting and distorted wood, okay, and leaks into your beautiful keepsakes around your home. So you have to maintain um, your roof. So it's not put it in and uh, wait 15 years. Correct. It's again. not a one and done. Not right now. Absolutely. Now you mentioned you know where the um, uh, pipes for you know the toilets and stuff come yes, up. Yes, sir. So it, I would imagine that in the summer heat that some of those are stressed. Some of the uh, places get talk about that. Absolutely. So a couple of different things that can happen during the summer. Um, one, we just have massive fluctuations in temperature. Okay. We've got heat, humidity, rain coming through. It can cause the uh, asphalt to asphalt adhesive around those areas to crack and break, which allows water to penetrate through. Okay. Also here in Florida and especially in Alachua County where we have all of these beautiful live oaks, squirrels and rodents. If you have a tree that is anywhere near your house and that squirrel can get up on your house, they're most likely going to go to your lead boots and they're going to chew on them. It's really weird. Uh, the lead uh. is sweet to them like candy. So they go and they chew on it and they sharpen their teeth, which then exposes your PVC and your pipes and allows water to penetrate through the roof. And again, leaks on your valuables. So, um, how often should people get their roof um, checked? Minimum of once a year, okay, or after a large event, okay? Mm -hmm. um, if you have had, uh, you know, if you see shingles in your yard, or if you see a bunch of tree limbs down, or heaven forbid something up on your roof, have a licensed roofing contractor come out and do an inspection. Most reputable companies will do free inspections. We offer free inspections at CBC Construction Group, a complimentary photo and video reports to go with it. So we can, again, educate our homeowners on the condition of their roof and give them the options for repair or replacement as needed and only when needed. Well, you know, that's really smart, Cindy, because um, when you have a roof, uh, we put a new roof on a few years ago, right? Oh, shucks, I missed and, it. And, well, however, right, you know, uh, I'm always asking them to, you know, uh, our gardener, you know, to get up with the, the blower, right? Yes, and sir. Blow, blow the leaves off the roof so that what you're talking about doesn't happen. Absolutely. And we also um, have a built-up roof section. We have an old sunroof. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what those are. In yes, Florida. sir. But, and then they, then you notorious for and, leaks, friends. Well, it's a built-up roof. So let's start talking about built-up roofs, okay? Yes, sir. Because uh, built-up roofs, for those that you don't know, are flat, right? Mm -hmm. And you see them uh, on some uh, homes, right? Uh, however. They're most common on commercial buildings. Absolutely. So tell us uh, what are the benefits and why do commercial buildings use uh, built up roofs? And uh, if you have them on your home, you know, what are some things we need to know about built up roofs? Yeah, absolutely. So the most common low slope roofing application that you're going to find on commercial and residential homes is going to be called what's TPO. Um, so it's basically like a, a rubber membrane. The reason why they use products like that, they're lightweight, okay, which makes it easier for them over large, large structures to maintain and hold the weight. And then it's got a long-term lifespan. Uh, another common one that you're going to see on the residential side is metal pans. Okay. Um, both of those items tend to be lighter in weight than a traditional shingle, and they tend to have a little bit longer of a lifespan. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we have done here recently with CDC Construction Group is to get into 
more eco-friendly products for both commercial and residential that can extend the lifespan of their roofs and your existing roofs. So we use what's called fluidified roofing systems through Geico and Henry products that are a basically a silicone coating that is going over the existing roofing system. Okay, the benefits of this is one, it is much more cost effective than a traditional re-roof. If you're doing a coating, it's typically going to be a third to half of the cost of a traditional re-roof, okay? Two, we are not putting all of that material from a traditional re-roof into our local landfills, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's taking a ton of um, weight and material outside of kind of polluting our environment, let, let's be honest, okay? Um, and three, it is still allowing you to seal up any leaks, any problems, any issues. If we're going to do those coating systems, we come out and do a test strip first to make sure that the system that is there is compatible with our product. If it passes the test, then we'll come out, do a soft wash pressure cleaning, apply their patented chemical products to pre-treat, and then do the silicone coating. For commercial building owners, that comes with a 20-year manufacturer defect warranty that is accepted by insurance companies, okay? And every roof and install done by CDC Construction Group comes with a 10-year labor and workmanship warranty on our install. So either way, you are covered from either the manufacturer or us because we stand behind our products and what we do. So um, when you have a built up roof uh, in a commercial building, it yes, used sir. to be they were tar, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, tar and gravel and stone. Yeah, yeah. so they were heavy. Very. And, and uh, they didn't work perfectly. No, yeah, no. And uh, also, again, when we're talking about landfills and eco-friendly products, a typical gravel roof is going to be about twice the weight of shingle. Shingle is already really heavy, okay? Mm -hmm. I picked up some shingle, and yeah, it's yeah. not like... Like one, easy. one is light, right? But yeah. when you start a doing a whole... A about 50 to 70 pounds. All of a sudden, it's like, like, oh, yeah. yeah. Get, you get a good workout in roofing. Okay. So, so um, why did built-up roofs get started? What, do you have any idea? Is, is it because of commercial buildings wanted to have a flat roof rather than... Honestly, I, I can't say that I'm entirely sure the why it started that way. I do know that people like to build things and they're just curious to try uh, different methods. Look at all of the ways we've come from stick huts, mud huts, pyramids to skyscrapers today. Uh, building applications and methods change over time. Low slopes tend to be wind resistant right? Um, there's less material that you're using when you're building uh, a flat roof versus a pitch. Okay, so right. cost could be something. But I'm gonna have to look into that more, Jeff. You, I mean, you well, gave me a stumper. Well, if you had, say, a 312 roof mm -hmm. pitch, okay, on a built-up roof area with, um, you know, plenty of drainage on yes, it. Yes, sir. Is that, is that being used at all, like low slope? On so uh, flat, a 312 flat pitch is actually not considered a low slope, and you can do a traditional shingle or metal on those items. If you're 212 or lower, then it's going to have to be one of those low slope applications. Now, um, what does it... Under do Florida Building Codes and Law. Okay. Well, so what, what is that? When I say 312, that's what... Um, three inches for every 12, what is it, three feet, yeah, 12 so feet? Yeah, so the easiest way that I like to tell people is to think of it kind of like uh, a horizontal and a flat, all right? If we're mm -hmm. looking on a bar, this is our 0 12 pitch, and then as we go up, 12 to 12 is straight up. So okay. three inches for every 12 feet. Yes, sir. Okay, mm -hmm. so that gives you some idea. I mean, three inches is only, you know, a little bit. However, mm -hmm. it's enough for water to run off. Absolutely. So, so the building code says 212 is the same as a traditional built-up roof, whereas 312 has enough pitch 
so that that's approved. Correct. You can do so, shingles and other materials. I've always thought, you know, with built-up roofs, that a 312 would have some advantages if you didn't need a flat surface. It can. So um, you can use different materials in the underlayment, things like that, okay? Again, it's allowing the water to flow off in a different way, uh, but the structure is going to need more material as far as truss work, as far as decking, in order to make that pitch and slope work. So oftentimes you go with flat because it's simple. And it's cheaper. Yes, sir. And that's probably why commercial buildings have built up roofs is because it's cheaper because you put down this flat surface, you don't have to have another structure like a home does, mm -hmm. and you have this flat roof, and commercial buildings, I think the look of a commercial building is different than a home. Absolutely. And so uh, they build all these, uh, it used to be, you know, tar and gravel mm -hmm. and tar paper, right? Yes. So you, 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 you'd have the wood, then you put the tar paper on, and then you have the gravel, and then you have the tar, and the tar was only one in a thousand human beings could deal with putting tar on a roof in the middle of August in pretty much. Florida, right? Yeah, it gets okay. pretty hot. It, it gets, gets pretty, pretty hot. hot. And, yeah. and, and then you have these machines that are stirring the tar, and it's smoking and yeah soap. that's a what's considered a hot mopped roofing yeah. application uh, i try and avoid those if possible okay. in the summer <laughs> so i'm going to switch gears on yes, you sir. Now. Okay. yes sir uh, a lot of people now are getting their um, insurance their homeowners insurance companies calling them and say we want to inspect your roof and before we renew you absolutely correct Let's talk about what's going on and what are some of the recommendations you suggest for our viewers and listeners. Absolutely. So um, the climate in Florida when it comes to um, homeowners insurance is changing. Uh, we had a few companies that left the state last year. And so the industry is trying to find different ways to retain insurance companies for our homeowners. Okay. Also, I'm sure you've noticed our premiums are going up. So they are wanting to have um, different requirements for those roofs as far as age, condition, and lifespan before they will insure. One of the biggest things that you can do as a homeowner is just, again, have a licensed roofing contractor come out and do annual inspections on the condition of your home. And you say your company does those for free? Yes, sir. We do those okay. for free. So how do they get a hold of you? So they're going to give us a call at our main office, or you can call my cell directly at 352-757-0880. Well, if, what if they don't remember that? Do you have a website? Absolutely. You can check us out at buildwithcbc.org or yeah. check out uh, our Facebook page. Any of that, we've got a few ways you to know, get a hold okay, of us. Okay, build with CBC. CBC. Mm hmm Yep. Dot, dot org. But if you Google yeah, sorry, Build I'm with nervous. CBC, if you Google Build with CBC. Yep, or just CBC Construction Group. CBC Construction Group, they will find you. Yes, sir. They okay, will. so we want everybody here Build with CBC or CBC Construction Group. Uh, you serve all of North Central Florida, right? All of the state of Florida actually. So our main areas and trade are Marion, Alachua, Citrus, Lake, Sumter, and Levy counties. Okay. Mm -hmm. Outside of that 70 mile radius, we can still service the entirety of the state, but typically in that range will be about five to 10% higher than a local contractor. However, many of our clients feel that it is worth the price difference to have a contractor that they can trust. Well, you and not only that, to have a contractor that's local and doing business in the area, um, I think is important. Just Very much agreed. They can find you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to show up Cindy, afterwards. Cindy, you can track Cindy down. If you have any problem, you just call Cindy and she'll make sure 
that it's taken care of, right? Yes, sir. That is and, the goal. And, you know, yeah, that really is um, important. At Melden Law, that's one of the things that we talk about is we're local. If you mm -hmm. want to talk to a Melden, either my son, Carrie, or myself will be glad to sit down and talk with you, go over your case, mm -hmm. whatever you want. And that um, it's, I think, important to... Uh, realize that local we always tell people if you're buying you know homeowners insurance car insurance mm -hmm. or you know go go to your local person uh, chances are they'll give you the best deal at uh, the same or a lower price absolutely and and uh, you're supporting the local economy which to me is a no-brainer definitely agreed you know um, so I grew up in this area. I'm actually from Inglis, Florida. Uh, Kaylee and Tyler, also locals, and we are here trying to work with our neighbors and the community to make sure that they're taken care of, uh, that they are secure from the roofs all the way down, and that they can enjoy their homes as their dream home. Wonderful. So I get, say I get a call from my insurance mm -hmm. uh, company. They want to do an inspection. I haven't had a local company out though. Should I run and get a local company Absolutely. to do an inspection before they come out? It uh, doesn't necessarily have to be before they come out, right? Mm -hmm. It can be before, after. Uh, sometimes the insurance companies will allow you to come at the same time, okay? Mm -hmm. um, get an inspection done and get photo and video reports to go with it. Depending on the condition of the roof, if we come out and we see that it still has useful life left over, there are forms that we can submit or the homeowner can submit to their insurance company to attempt to get that extended. Now, they won't always accept it, to, to be fair, depends and varies depending on their policy, the company, and again, the age of the roof. But oftentimes, you can get a little extra time or you just see and have an idea of what the condition of the roof is. So either way, it's a win-win mm -hmm. as far as knowing what your roof condition is. And uh, uh, if you call CBC Construction Group, they'll do it for free. Absolutely. Uh, and look, it's good business because whenever the person needs a, a roof job, they're going to call you. Even It Correct. might be five years from now, but mm -hmm. you know, in our business, in your business, uh, we're, we're here for the long run, not the yes, short sir. run, right? We uh, like to think of ourselves as a lifetime roofer, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Tyler is a multi-generation roofing family. Uh, his brothers own roofing companies here locally as well. His dad trained and they actually just had uh, a baby in December um, who is named Ridge Thatcher Lee. So his name literally <laughs> translates to Peak Maker of Roofs Lee. Pretty dedicated roofing Great. family. We want to be here for our community and our neighbors for many years to come. Most people don't want to get their roof done, okay? They want to wait as long as possible or until they get that letter from the insurance or companies until, to say we have to. until the roof fails. That right? part. I mean, mm -hmm. if, I, if I've got a roof and there's no leaks, why, why screw do you want with to replace it? it? Right? Agreed. You know, so uh, there, there's a big you know, uh, change going on because Florida got hit with these hurricanes. And mm -hmm. there's another factor, and that is uh, the cost uh, the cost of everything now has gone up a Correct. lot, right? Since pre-COVID, it's probably gone up 30% for a lot of... Uh, for the roofing industry in particular, um, just material and labor costs from COVID typically are going up 7 to 12% quarterly. It started to even out, uh, I'd probably say in the last six months, now, since we didn't have as active of a hurricane season last year, but it's still going to get more expensive. And unfortunately, even as a, a business that's wanting to keep costs low for our homeowners, we have to watch that curve and meet with it to make sure that our expenses are taken care of as well. So in all fairness to the insurance industry, mm -hmm. if it costs, you know, 50% more to do a roof than it did, you know, four or five years ago, Correct. They, they have to charge you more because they know a certain percentage of their insurers are going to mm -hmm. need a roof, right? Absolutely so, agreed. So, you know, so. they're, they're a business like any other. Um, we do our best not to badmouth 
insurance and the industry itself because it is a very important tool for homeowners to have. If you have a case of a total loss in a hurricane, you need your insurance. Right. right. So if it costs you ten, if it costs you ten thousand dollars a year for homeowners insurance, it's a whole lot of money, right? Correct. On the other hand, if you have um, a loss and it's seventy eight thousand, mm -hmm. that hurts because Absolutely. you know uh, some people may uh, some retirees may be able to handle it, but most people can't, don't right? Have most people don't have the money on hand to even do an average fifteen hundred dollar repair for their right. roof. Yeah, and, you know, and, it's, and and when the roof fails, right during a you know a heavy storm or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, then um, it's not just the roof, right? It's all your contents and everything your else, values. right? So absolutely. So a seventy or eighty or a hundred thousand dollar loss isn't um, that uncommon. I mean, you can. Very much so. Have those. Well, let's let's uh, get to uh, you know the end of the show here with yep. a, a, a message. Okay. Okay. First of all, um, CBC Construction Group is uh, here in North Central Florida. Uh, they're trustworthy. They reliable. They're a family of roofers who've been here a long time, and that makes a big difference because. People get into the uh, roofing industry without knowing what they're doing, yep. without the commitment. Uh, you know your your uh, company's going to be here. They're going to stand behind their product because that's all they do. Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. And, and they even named their kid <laughs> Roof. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Peak. Peak. peak I'm the sorry. Best. Peak. What is it? Peak. Ridge. Ridge. Peak. Thatcher. Ridge. Peak so the maker. peak of the roof. Mm -hmm. The ridge, wait, what's the difference? The peak is the top. Yep, so that's and, technically and, called a ridge, yeah, right? That, yeah. That's the roofing term for it. Uh, and Thatcher was a, an older school uh, method of installation, like, you know, the palm frond roofs right. and the tiki yeah. huts? That's a thatched roof. Right, okay. Yeah. So when, when you start naming your kid after roofing terminology, you know they're dedicated. And uh, more, more importantly that, than that, I didn't know this, that... They will do free inspections for you. Yes, uh, it'll help with your insurance. And also, look, um, you really should be able to know yourself so you can plan. Uh, if your mm -hmm. roof uh, has some problems, maybe they can be patched and uh, give you another couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something else uh, that you can do. You can say, look, there, there's one part of the roof that you know definitely needs yep. to be redone. And when we bought a new home back in um, 2019, mm -hmm. it was a 1941 home. Oh, wow. Okay. Classic. So the first thing we did, though, was we started with the roof. Okay? Yeah, yeah. We, we, good choice. We did the whole roof, and then we had the built-up part that had mm -hmm. just been redone two or three years before. So that flat part was was uh, okay. Yes, so sir. anyhow... Um, the, and then we started, you know, the repainting and we started mm -hmm. doing everything else. And the reason was, is if you don't have a solid roof, then all the rest of it is in danger. Absolutely. You know, that's the, the foundation. Everything else can be vulnerable if the roof is left unprotected. So start with that. Have us come out, take a look. We will do photo and video inspections for you, entirely complimentary, and we will give you all of your options for repair or replacement. Right. We're never going to be pushy and try and push a homeowner or a commercial building owner into something that they do not need. Okay. Our goal is to give you all of the tools that you need to make the right choice, and hopefully that's with us. Yeah. And look, for some of you out there, uh, if you have money, uh, there's strategies to get your rates down. You can do a deductible of five or ten thousand dollars. That's a high deductible, but mm -hmm. for a lot of people, five or ten thousand is fine, right? Mm -hmm. They, you know, they've got you know retired or they they're they've done well and they have that money. And there's different strategies you mm -hmm. can uh, look at. However, uh, the insurance companies want to make sure that your probability of having a loss is low. Mm -hmm. And they do that, with they start with the roof. Um, that's where most of uh, the problems occur. And if you get a brand new roof, 
uh, you're likely to uh, survive the kind of storms that we have in north central Florida because we are not on the coast. We don't mm -hmm. get the 110 mile an hour winds uh, in Ocala and Gainesville and the villages. Mm -hmm. I mean, by the time it gets Average to Average is about 65 to 75, depending on what area. Right. Mm -hmm. And our, the biggest threat for us is, um, is the wind can knock down trees and the tree, if you don't have underground power, then the older neighborhoods like ours, they, you know, knock down trees and you may be out of power for a while. Um, you know, the, um, the fact that uh, we don't get the, the heavy winds mm -hmm. really minimizes um, our risk in a lot of ways. So make sure that your roof mm -hmm. uh, is taken care of and then um, shop. Yeah shop your your insurance company very much agreed and uh one of the strategies that you're you spoke of when you get a new roof you need to have a licensed home inspector come out and do what's called a wind mitigation report that wind mitigation report is going to show that you have the appropriate hurricane straps okay the age and the lifespan of the roof and then it's been brought up to current florida building code okay march of this year international building codes were updated, okay? Hasn't been any major changes from the last ones here for Florida in regards to roofing. But when you have that form, which CBC Construction Group includes in any of our new roof replacements, entirely free of cost to our clients, you then can take that paper and have a much stronger position when you are shopping for insurance in Florida. So um, that's our message, plan ahead, Okay. Um, call CBC Construction Group. Uh, they'll come out for free and give you a, uh, a legitimate um, written. estimate. Written. A written. legitimate written estimate that will really um, tell you this is uh, what your roof is. And, and look, if your roof doesn't need repair, they're legitimate. They're not going to tell you it needs to be repaired. If mm -hmm. it's a minor repair, they'll give you the options uh, of whether or not you repair it and buy a couple years or uh, if it's time to move forward because you may wind up getting a lower homeowner's rate by getting a brand new roof, right? Yes, with, sir. With the certification. Yes, sir. So it may, there may be actually a trade-off because if you mm -hmm. get a lower rate, it helps to compensate for the cost of the newer roof. Maybe uh, you could get three or four years more out of the roof, but the, it's a more vulnerable mm -hmm. uh, roof than a brand new roof because I imagine uh, you keep improving uh, roofing so that yes, uh, it's less and less likely that you're going to have wind and storm damage and rain damage and Absolutely. all that, right? Yes, sir. Uh, roofing materials and products are continuously increasing in their quality and integrity. Um, the, the main thing here, again, is just having that education. Knowledge is power. So have somebody come out, take a look at it, and then you can know what to do from there. Well, I'm going to run home and check my roof, and then I'm going to call CBC Construction and have them come over and there we check go. me out and tell me Please whether or not. Please allow me to go on the ladder instead okay. of you having to, Jeff. Okay? <laughs> okay. I'm sure your son will appreciate it. <laughs> well, thank you again for uh, being our guest, uh, Cindy. Uh, Cindy Quick with CBC uh, Construction Group. Uh, it's been uh, educational for me. And uh, I hope that all of our listeners and the viewers uh, learned something today about roofing. It's a big deal in Florida, so, yes, <laughs> so pay attention. And uh, this is a, a wrap on uh, our, our, re our today's edition for uh, Meldon Law and Friends. And uh, we really appreciate you all listening uh, and viewing our show. Thank you very much. And we'll be back next week at the same time.